YouTube doesn't think you deserve to know when new videos get uploaded. Show them they're not the boss of you by smashing that bell icon, so you can be notified when your favorite content creators are begging for your attention. Voltron Legendary Defender. At a glance, one might not think that a reboot of an 80s kids cartoon about five mechanical cats that turn into a giant sword-wielding robot would strike such a chord with fans of all ages. And yet, the series recently dropped its final season on Netflix and many of us have not stopped crying. Though not all for the same reasons. It's hard to picture how a show so full of epic moments could continue to top itself even as it crossed the finish line, and many would argue that it didn't, but picture it we will. Welcome to the Top 10 Moments of Voltron Legendary Defender Season 8. Number 10. The Callbacks from Launch Date. Season 8 begins on a positively meta note with Pidge watching an in-universe TV show based on the Paladins, which turns out to be a clip from the original Voltron Defender of the Universe show. Not only that, but this episode is full of nods to the old series that are amusing to no end. New viewers may not appreciate or even notice them, but for this OG fan, a little nostalgia scratched me right where I itched, and in a season that could be oppressively dark and depressing at times, this bit of levity was much appreciated. Number 9. Aksha reaches out to Zethrid from The Grudge. Aksha was a character who was sadly underutilized this season, with a potential storyline with Keith that just kind of disappeared. But one of her best moments of the entire series came when she confronted her former ally Zethrid. Zethrid is consumed with anger and blaming Keith for the loss of her partner Azor, but Aksha makes her understand that the anger really comes from feeling like an outcast her entire life due to being a Galra half-breed, something they and Keith all have in common. This is especially poignant because, going back to their early appearances, there was always an underlying tension between these two, and you get the impression that Zethrid would probably turn on Aksha at some point. And even though she did, Aksha still tries to appeal to her better nature. As was a recurring theme this season, she finds the goodness beneath the anger. They may have been enemies, but they were still friends. And in the end, that's what mattered most. Aww. Number 8. Keith's pep talk to Lance from Uncharted Regions. As the finale approaches, the magnitude of Onerva's master plan is really setting in, and Allura is going to more and more extreme lengths to stop her, leaving Lance unsure if they even can stop her, and at what cost. And just when he's feeling particularly helpless, it's Lance's former rival Keith of all people who gives him hope that they can still win through in the end. It's a shame the Lance-Keith dynamic took a backseat in later seasons, because scenes like this one really show how much these two have grown. In Season 1, them having a conversation like this would have been unthinkable, but now they can genuinely trust and confide in each other. And outside of their respective relationships with Shiro and Allura, I'd say this is arguably the deepest connection among the main cast. It may not have been the type of connection the Clance shippers were hoping for, but it's still an endearing moment from two characters who had come a pretty damn long way together. Number 7. The Battle at Oriand from Genesis. This entire episode is as intense as anything the show has done. The Paladins launch a desperate attack on Oriand to stop Onerva only to be met with odds that seem insurmountable. And just as they're fighting their way through multiple Komar Robeasts, things get even worse as they learn what had been Onerva's plan all along. The return of Syncline. They barely defeated it before, but now things are so much worse. And they don't just get beat this time, they get their asses kicked. But what really makes this scene so damn unsettling is the Lotor factor. We know he's in there, but they never actually show him. So we don't know what the state of him is or if he's even technically alive. Only that Onerva's controlling him like a puppet, caring nothing for the consequences of what she's doing even if it means taking out her own people. Finally, with Voltron decimated and Syncline about to make Lance a head shorter, Allura makes a desperate attempt to stop her psychotic nemesis by unlocking a new Bayard form, an actual Lance. But still, Onerva one-ups Allura by forcing her to choose between her desire for revenge and saving the boy she loves. It's a nail-biting sequence, the first of several that would drive home how depraved and ruthless Onerva had become, and a cruel reminder that things were going to get worse for the Paladins before they got better. Number 6. 
The Paladins Meet Their Predecessors, from Knights of Light, Parts 1 and 2. After Allura absorbs one of the entities from the Rift in order to gain access to Anerva's mind, the Paladins find themselves on the Astral Plane meeting the long-imprisoned spirits of the Paladins of old. Learning their predecessors are proud that their legacy has been carried on is a humbling experience for each character, and Allura's emotional reunion with her father after it was stressed for eight seasons how much she missed him is especially touching. But the really interesting part comes when they meet the spirit of Zarkon, and not the quintessence-fueled madman the Paladins knew, but the person he was in the beginning, a flawed but benevolent ruler who only wanted to do right by his people and defend the universe. Zarkon's horror upon learning that his obsession with quintessence led him down a path to becoming a genocidal despot guilty of some of the worst atrocities the universe had ever seen is truly powerful stuff. As is Allura finally expressing her long-repressed rage at the man responsible for the loss of her people, her entire world, and 10,000 years of suffering. But even with the gravity of what he'd done finally hitting him, Zarkon is given a chance to make amends as all ten paladins, the old and the new, join together to escape the mental prison created by the greatest evil the universe has ever faced. Badass. Number 5. The Paladins Appeal to Anerva. From the End is the Beginning. Over the course of Season 8, Anerva had done more than enough to earn the title of most hateable villain in this franchise, which only makes her true motivations all the more fascinating. She's finally been defeated, the Paladins are imploring her to undo the damage she's done before existence itself ceases to be, and it's here that we at last see Anerva for what she really is. An empty shell, who had lived one lifetime after another being unable to experience joy and happiness. A broken woman who only wanted her family back, who took the laws of time, space, and reality and bent them over the table, all for the chance to be the mother to her son that she was never able to be, only for the universe to spit in her face at every turn and say, No. You can't. But still, even with as far gone as Anerva is, Allura still reaches out to her, convincing her to honor her son rather than letting his fate be the reason for her causing the end of everything. Even though Allura had spent the entire season growing more and more desperate to take Anerva down, in the end, it was her ability to see the goodness in anyone, even her greatest enemy, that made the biggest difference. Number 4. The post credit scene. From the end is the beginning. I wanted to put this moment higher on the list, but I settled on number four because the show is deliberately vague about what exactly is going on here. The war is finally over, in the wake of Allura sacrificing herself to save every reality in existence. But despite the terribly sad fate of this beloved character, the show still ends on an uplifting note. It's just not clear what that note is. Maybe Allura had become the lion goddess the Erusion spoke of, or maybe it's something else. In the last moments of the finale, when the lions reactivate, the lights in the blue lion are by far the brightest. They're colored differently. Something is happening to Allura's lion that is not happening to the others. Perhaps hinting that blue sensed Allura's presence somehow. Couple that with the Altaian markings Allura gave Lance beginning to glow, and maybe it's a sign that Allura isn't lost to them. That she's still out there somewhere, and... Maybe there's a chance that she can come back. Even though the series came to a close in the wake of a heartbreaking loss, it still ends on what Voltron was always meant to be. A symbol of hope. Number 3. Shiro Rides Again, from the Zenith. This is really two moments in one, but they kind of had to go together. The Paladins and their allies have waged a desperate battle against Anerva's forces, but couldn't prevent her from taking her massive Robeast and piercing the wall between realities. The Atlas can't enter the Rift, Voltron can't defeat Anerva alone, it all seems hopeless when all of a sudden, the Coalition's allies show up with a whole fleet of Balmeras and feed the Paladins so much energy that they're able to level up Voltron and the Atlas into one giant gigantic combiner mech. 
What's going on? How is this even possible? I have no idea, and I didn't even care. This sequence is so glorious and so uplifting, I was ecstatic just to be along for the ride. But still, it gets better. Because not only did this mean the Paladins were finally on an equal playing field with Onerva and had a real chance to stop her, it also meant that, for one last time, Shiro got to charge into battle and fight alongside his friends again. If you didn't jump out of your seat and cheer at this moment, I really don't know what to tell you. Number 2 Lance and Allura's first date from launch date. A moment eight seasons in the making that did not disappoint. Unless you're a Clance shipper, but, well, they're never happy. And it felt so well-earned because of how much these characters have grown together, going from the early days of Allura being annoyed by Lance's obnoxious flirting, to becoming friends and confidants, to finally becoming something more. What makes it so sweet is that we see how excited and nervous both of them are. Lance going to Karan and Keith for advice, Pidge and Romel taking Allura shopping for a dress, and their conversation in the park is one of the most heartwarming moments of the whole series. Dinner with Lance's family only reminding Allura of how alone she feels, and Lance assuring her that he'll never let her be alone was one thing, but him repeating his I would cross the universe for you line really made this something special. In season two, he said that just to be a cheesy flirt, but now he really means it. He's in love with Allura, and he's putting himself out there, something he never had the courage to do before, just to comfort her. It's an incredibly touching and romantic scene, punctuated by the big moment fans of this pairing had been waiting for, and for this longtime fan who had been rooting for these two crazy kids as far back as the original series, this is one kiss that was definitely worth the wait. And the number one moment is... Alora's Goodbye, From the End is the Beginning. I need to be clear about something. So much has already been said by a lot of fans about how Alora sacrificing herself was a terrible decision on the part of the writers. And I'm right there with those people. I'm not saying I didn't hate it. I'm not saying it didn't feel like the writers were trying to shoehorn a character's death into the story with little to no justification. I'm not saying it didn't feel forced or cruel or needlessly tragic and pointless. I'm not saying her death wasn't easily avoidable with a very simple rewrite. I'm not saying the ending couldn't have been just as impactful without Alora dying. And for the record, yes, when I do my top worst moments list for season 8, this moment will be number one on that list as well. That's how torn I am. Because in so many ways, so many ways, I did absolutely hate this. But I just can't deny how powerful, how emotional this scene is. All of existence has ended, and the only way they can see to set things right is for Allura to make the ultimate sacrifice. It's absolutely devastating. And even though it was unbearably frustrating from a story standpoint, even though I was begging for a different outcome, the emotion in this scene is so genuine and heartfelt that it somehow still works. Allura had already lost her family, lost her people, lost her whole world. But she found a new family, a new home, even found someone to love and who loved her. And then, to save existence itself, she had to let them all go. Her goodbyes to everyone are heart-wrenching. The Paladins were more than friends to her. Like she said that night in the park with Lance, they were the source of her strength. One by one, we're reminded of how much Alora has meant to them, how much they've meant to her. And finally, she has to say goodbye to the one she went on the greatest journey with. The annoying goofball who became her best friend. The one she entrusted with her father's legacy. And finally, became something more precious to her than she ever imagined. For the first time, she tells him she loves him. That she'll always be with him. She gives him the mark of her people. And then, walks off into the light to join her father. Existence is saved, Altea is restored, but Alora is gone. God damn it! You know, I very much appreciate shows like this that can be written for adults to enjoy as well as kids, but the next time I get attached to a cartoon, I need to pick one that's less emotionally exhausting. Because honestly, I don't think I could go through this again.
But that being said, I'm not done with this show quite yet. Stay tuned, because coming up will be the top worst moments of Voltron Legendary Defender Season 8, and yeah, this one's gonna be therapeutic. Until then, do all the things, follow me in all the places, and I'll see you soon. Over. Out.